Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a banned enchantment deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the constellation creatures from Theros alongside Nico Eris from Kaltheim. The legendary planeswalker enters the battlefield creating X shard tokens, and those shard tokens happen to be enchantments, so they're great at enabling constellation for various creatures, like the Dustin Champion, which will draw a card and get a plus one plus one counter for each enchantment that enters the battlefield under our control. And we've got Archon of Sun's Grace that generates a 2-2 Pegasus token for each enchantment. So those are some very powerful payoff cards if we play a Nico and can sink a lot of mana in the X cost. And then Nico has some other abilities. The first plus one says up to one target creature we control cannot be blocked this turn. And when it deals damage, we return it to its owner's hand. So that's one way to potentially close out the game after we put a ton of counters on Satessin Champion. Then the first minus one deals two damage to target tapped creature for each card we've drawn this turn. So once again, synergizes nicely with Satessin Champion if we've drawn a lot of cards with Constellation. And then the final minus one creates another shard token. So that's more Constellation triggers for the deck. Then to combine with Nico Iris, we also have two copies of Nyx Bloom Ancient, which can help us in our quest of sharding all over the opponent, because if we tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana instead, and also happens to be an enchantment creature, so it triggers Constellation. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck. At two mana, we've got some more ramp with Wolf Willow Haven, which is also an enchantment, so will trigger Constellation for us. We've got two copies of Anessian Wanderer, which is also great, another constellation creature. It's a 1-3, so it doesn't die to the commonly played removal spells like Stomp and Standard. And whenever an enchantment enters under our control, we get to take a look at the top three cards of our library, reveal a land card and put it into our hand. So this will make it so we can keep hitting our land drops, and also synergizes very nicely with our Dryad of the Elysian Grove, which we'll get to in a second. Then we've got two copies of Protean Thaumaturge, a two mana 1-1 one, one human wizard with constellation, turning it into a copy of any creature on on the battlefield, so that way we can potentially double up on our constellation triggers like Satessin Champion and Archon of Sun's Grace, and we can always switch the creature we're copying at any point in the game, can also copy opposing creatures potentially. And then we've got four copies of Omen of the Sea as another cheap way to enable constellation, and also lets us scry to and then draw a card, so it gives us quite a bit of card selection to find our missing combo pieces. Then at 3 mana, of course, the full playset of Satessin Champion, one of the key cards in the deck, alongside 4 copies of Dryad of the Elysian Grove, an enchantment creature, so good for Constellation. It lets us play an additional land on each of our turns, so very good synergy with Anessian Wanderer, as we can get extra lands with Wanderer and then deploy them with our Dryad of the Elysian Grove, so we don't get stuck with a bunch of lands in hand. And lands we control are every basic land type in addition to their other types, so it also fixes our mana, which can be useful in this deck, since we do have some demanding casting costs with Archon needing double wine, and Nico needing double blue, and eventually Nyx Bloom Ancient at triple green. Then we've got two copies of Banishing Light as a bit of interaction that also triggers Constellation. Then our full playset of Archon of Sun's Grace, which is going to be our finisher of choice, making a whole army of Pegasus tokens. And then finally, two copies of Nyx Bloom Ancient, which we can also potentially copy with our Protean Thaumaturge to make a ridiculous amount of mana. And the full playset of Nico Eris, which doubles as both a bit of interaction and a bunch of card draw all in one card. And then we do have a lot of lands in this deck, since we don't really want to miss any land drops. And it also synergizes with our Dryads to have a lot of lands to deploy. So we've got 28 lands total, with 4 copies of Fabled Passage, with 2 of each basic land to search up. Then all 12 pathways in the band colors, and a few temples as well to help us with mana fixing. And to give us a bit of card selection, 3 Temple of Plenty and 3 Temple of Mystery. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. We've got our Haven to ramp into Archon and Nico. Opponent with a turn on Alsades in black-white. Play Temple for now. And then Fabled Passage is a little awkward because I'm going to need an extra white source if I want to be able to play a turn three Archon. Although now with Champion, we might just run out Champion first. A rune of Mortality gives, I'll say, Death Touch. So, one to white mana. And we'll play Haven. So, 
probably won't be able to play Archon unless we draw another white source. So then we'll just play Champion and Archon the turn after. All that glitters turns Alcide into a 4-4. Alright, so we'll go Champion plus Taplands. And then Nico can potentially take out the Alcide next turn already, since we can make a couple shard tokens, trigger Constellation, and then the minus one will be able to deal at least four damage. It's gonna be six damage if we can play Nico for X equals two. And a Toski, all right, so we'll take four. Opponent draws a card from Toski. But I think we stick to the plan of playing Nico here. And we'll keep champion on defense. So didn't quite get to cast a giant Nico after playing Archon, but we can play Archon next turn. Still have ways to trigger Constellation here, as does our opponent. Alrighty, so we've got options. Three, four, five, six mana available. So I'm kind of liking Archon into another enchantment, which is probably going to be Haven. And Nico can make another token. And Champion can start attacking. Alright, we've got our Nyx Bloom Ancient, we've got a lot of mana, so if we find another Nico along the way, we'll be in business. Rune of Sustenance on Toski. If they can give it Death Touch with another Rune of Mortality, that could be annoying, but we can just keep chumping with our Pegasus tokens. Probably should have double blocked just to gain a bit more life, but you never know if they have some combo tricks. Protean Thaumaturge, also nice with Nyx Bloom Ancient. So an embarrassment of riches. Probably want to get uh, Nix Bloom Ancient down as soon as possible. And then if we can avoid tapping Haven, that would be nice too. So how about something like this? Five. I guess we wouldn't be able to not tap Haven. I guess this is fine. And then we can play Dryad, which lets me play an extra land. And play another Sutessant Champion. Then I can plus on Archon. But I think we just attack with the Champion. Opponent chumps. Alright, next turn I can play another Thaumaturge to copy Ancient, and then play Omen, have infinite mana basically. And then we can go digging for another Nico to generate an army of Pegasus tokens. Again, we could double block with more than one token to gain more life, but I don't think it matters. Alright, so step one, Thaumaturge into Archon, into Omen. Thaumaturge becomes Nyx Bloom Ancient. And we're just digging for, I guess, another Nikos, another way to trigger Constellation is fine.
We're gonna decline here. Just looking for Nico. Could sacrifice Omen, perhaps. Make another shard token. I guess we'll sacrifice another one. Alright, there he is. Play some extra lands out from Dryad. Trigger Constellation with Haven. Alright, and then float a bunch of mana. And we do have to be careful with Satessan Champion that we don't draw too many cards. So we've got 25, so if we do it for 10, we should be safe here. Thaumaturge is going to slow this down a little bit. Nico makes champion unblockable. Play another Nico for zero. Make another one unblockable. And that should be enough. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Fetch a forest, turn two wanderer, turn three dryads, get the lands going. Or we can maybe play turn three citizen champion if we think it'll survive. Opponent on Jeskai. Plays a temple. So pretty important that we hit an extra land with a Nessian Wonder here, since we'll need it. See the truth, so... Maybe they're some sort of mutate deck with Vodrok. I guess I can play Satessan Champion, and then next turn Dryad lets me play an extra land, and we get to gain some card advantage. It's a close call. Could also just go for Dryad, hope to hit a land, and then Archon into Nico. But this way we might get two constellation triggers with our Dryad next turn. And yeah, there's a Symbiote, so our opponent is indeed a mutate deck. And an Octopus gonna mutate right now. This card's Cloud Piercer. Time for Dryads.
And probably don't need Omen. This can attack. Alright, so next turn we can maybe play Archon and then play a big Nico to turn after. Heron gonna give Octopus flying. So her opponent's probably playing the version that can potentially combo off in one big turn. Yeah, as we see the black mana for Hemophage. So Archon at least gives us a blocker. Next turn we can make a big play. Let's see if we're dead. If they have an open Omen Pants into Vadrock, we could be in trouble. It's gonna be a Lord Dracus for now. Which can get back a uh, Seed of Truth. Alright, so we will get to cast Nico. If we find an Unsap Lands, which we did, we can even play Nyx Bloom Ancient and then. We would still get an extra land drop from Dryad, but it's not enough for a big Nico. So the question is like, do we wait one more turn for an even bigger Nico? Or do we settle for Nico for X equals four, make four tokens? Yeah, that's probably enough here. Even though we could go even bigger. Still have an extra land drop left. And then what does Nico do? Opponent's at 12. How much damage do we have on the board? 5, 11, 12. But of course they can block with Heron. If I make one of my creatures unblockable, let's say the Archon, they can still block Dryads. Take 10 down to 2, which isn't quite lethal. If I make another Shard, We've got a bigger champion. Can't quite kill the Heron since it's not tapped, so I guess we'll just make another shard. And attack for a bunch. Opponent doesn't have to block the Tessin champion. So there are two. And we'll discard some lands we don't need anymore. Alright, let's see if our opponent can combo off. We could definitely be dead. It's gonna be a Seed of Truth, so now they need open Omen Pants. For starters. And then Vodrok lets them cast open the Omen Pants whenever they mutate to add more mana. And then they can keep mutating until they find Hemophage to start draining us. And that should kill us. Opponents unlikely to fizzle since they have a ton of cards in hand. But the question is, do they have open plus Vodrok? It's gonna be just a Hemophage for now. That's fine. This card's open Omen Pants. Interesting, so... Now what? They get back Seed of Truth. But they don't have a Vodrock yet, and it mutates for 4 mana. So there's still one mana short of uh, mutating Vadrock. 
second Hemophage, but our opponent's now tapped out. Feels like we could have died, but maybe they were just missing Vodrock here. Gets back, see the truth, we're at six. But I'm sure we can figure out a way to kill them next turn. Man, our opponent explodes. Sweet. So yeah, next turn we could have played Nyx Bloom Ancient to get access to more mana. Potentially make our Citizen Champion unblockable with Nico to get in for a lot of damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Nessian Wanderer plus a couple enchantments. Gonna make sure we keep hitting our land drops and then Omen can dig for some action. Like maybe Citizen Champion. Archon of Sun's Grace or Nico. And I guess we'll just start by fetching. Forest is fine. We have double white, we have blue. Although we might need double blue at some point as well. Since we drew Nico, we definitely want double blue. So we'll prioritize double blue over double white. Opponent with an Alpine Meadow, so a red-white snow deck. Can't quite Frostbite to kill Wander at least. If we don't need to Banishing Light, I'll probably main phase Omen in case we draw into a tapped land so we can play alongside it. It's gonna be a Venerable Knight. That I don't really need to Banishing Light, so stick to the plan, play Omen. And pick up a temple. And then we're pretty far from casting Nyx Bloom Ancient and don't need another land. Alright, Triad of Legion Grove is pretty nice. So now we'll happily take more lands to play alongside Dryad. And then we can play a big Nico. So now we could see a Frostbite kill Nessian Wanderer. It's gonna be a Mall of the Skyclaves instead. So, could consider using Banishing Light, although Archon of Sun's Grace seems pretty good too here. So, double whites. And then next turn. If I pick up a land, I can go Dryads, play two lands, play Banishing Light. Or we can just play a Nico. Worthy Knights can make some 1-1 one -one human tokens. Veteran pumps both Knights. And we take five. Another Archon. So we're pretty likely to find an untapped land with Nessian Wonder once we play Dryads. Which would then let me Banishing Light, which feels like a pretty good sequence. And then Banishing Light can exile maybe the Mall of the Skyclaves itself instead of the creature, since it can just move the equipment. And we'll take an untapped land. And then next turn we have a lot of mana. Can play big Nico, generate an army of Pegasus tokens. So if they can't answer Archon, opponent's gonna be in trouble, and we do have a backup. Emberth Paladin with Adamant, so 6-3 haste, not bad. I'll happily double block or chum block that one. Well, now I'm probably just double blocking Venerable Knight instead. That way we gain 4 as opposed to just 2, don't expect any combo tricks. Load all our mana. I guess we still get an extra land thanks to Dryad. So X equals 5. Good, 
And then we can make another token if we want to. And attack. Alright, six Pegasus tokens on defense. And next turn we can make more tokens if we want to. So unless we get a Nyx Bloom Ancients, we typically don't end up sacrificing the shard tokens since it requires quite a bit of mana. And we usually have other things to spend our mana on after we draw a ton of cards with Setessen Champion. And I don't think this is going to be a game where we sacrifice any shard tokens since our opponent appears pretty dead in the air. Alright, so we can move to combat. No settled wreckage we need to play around, luckily. Ardenvale Tactician taps two of our creatures down, but they're still taking 12 in the air. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Thaumaturge to potentially copy Satessan Champion. And I'll take an extra land. Wanderer can find lands, but we're a bit light on Constellation triggers. So I think we still bottom that. Also, there is a line where we play the Wanderer turn 2, turn 3 Banishing Lights, but then we're not deploying Thaumaturge and Champion. Well, a Ruin Crab could give us some problems. Might have to Banishing Light it before we play Setessen Champion. This can also answer Teferi's Tutelage, which might be in their deck. Cacophony Mills for 8. Yeah, I'm just gonna Banishing Light here. Drawing too many cards with Setessen Champion could be a drawback in this matchup. And now that we have Double White for Archon, that's gonna be our win condition of choice. Banishing Lights. Does enable Constellation, but uh, there's no target for the Thaumaturge to copy. Not that I wanted to copy the Crab anyway. Fable Passage would have milled us for 6. Now just gets a tapped Island. And another Cacophony mills for 8. So already halfway through our library. Alright, next turn we can Banishing Lights, maybe a Tutelage, turn Thaumaturge into Archon, and take it from there. It's gonna be a frantic inventory to draw one instead, that's fine. And Cacophony Mills for 8, down to 23 cards now. And Nico is a nice draw, so we can play Nico. For x equals 2. Turn our Thaumaturge into Archon. And then when we make another token here, we'll have two Archons in play. Alright, so... We are presenting lethal damage for next turn. Opponent's gonna opt. Fable Passage. So this is a turn where they might cast a big card draw effect like into the story to refuel. But that's not gonna be enough here. Since they don't have a tutelage in play. Rune Crab a bit late to the party. And all our creatures fly, so our opponent's just dead on board. The mill matchup is typically pretty bad, so we're lucky to escape with a win here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. A bit light on enchantments, but I don't think we can turn this one down. Thaumaturge to eventually copy Setessen Champion, so any enchantment here will get the party started. And then in terms of our lands, we do need single green, double blue, double white. So don't have every color yet necessarily. But we'll definitely need blue and green for starters. So 
So let's see what the opponent's up to. Planes. Alright. So now we can play green, white, and uh, blue here. And then we should have every color. Put in mono white. Alright, just waiting on an enchantment. Nico would also be acceptable. And speak of the devil, there's Nico right on time. So, yeah, I think we're just gonna cast Nico here already. X equals 1, since our opponent might have a sweeper effect incoming next turn. Thaumaturge turns into Sedestin Champion, and we'll make another shard. So now even if they wipe the board, we drew a lot of extra cards, so we don't mind as much. Opponent passes, Omen the draw. And our opponent concedes, I mean, what are they supposed to do against all this card advantage? Nico can make more shard tokens, and uh, we don't have a lack of action in hand. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a somewhat slow but uh, powerful hand. We've got our two main constellation creatures, Nico and a bit of interaction. Just missing a two drop to get the uh, curve a bit lower, but we've got a couple two drops we could draw into. And as long as we hit our land drops, we might get away with skipping our two drop as well. So we'll need green mana eventually. But Nico is double blue and Archon's double white, so we're definitely counting on Dryad surviving here. I guess for now we can play this as a blue source, and then if we draw basic forests, we can play that instead. Right, Freebooter is going to have a look. So they might just take the Banishing Light, which can get back whatever they steal. Alright, so if we play Satessin Champion, we're hoping the opponent does not have Myers Grasp. If they do, it's a bit of a disaster. But I think we still try it. If it's just a dead weight, we'll be fine. And then next turn we can enable Constellation draw card. Start hitting our extra land drops with Dryad, which we can then spend on Nico. Alright, it's gonna be a Blood Sky Berserker into presumably a second spell. Maybe a Mogus's favor. Yep. So a 3 1 Hateful Eidolon, which we will take. So I don't have the double blue for Nico just yet, but maybe Dryad can address that. Could also play Archon first, and then wait on Dryad. Yeah, that's also reasonable. Get a nice 3-4 lifelinking flyer. And then next turn Dryad can enable Constellation for both our creatures. So yeah, gonna take a bit of damage early here. But hopefully we can keep our two creatures alive. And then next turn we can easily block Eidolon with one of our Pegasus tokens. Alright, so play Dryad. And then scry towards a second blue source. To play Nico in case the dry dies, but if it survives, we'll be just fine. And then I could consider attacking to gain three. So worst case scenario is they have a dead weight for my 2-2 token and cast a second spell to give the Berserker menace. Alright, so we're back. Apparently our opponents cast 
village rights on a fresh berserker to give this menace. So we'll take five. And uh, yeah, we can play Nico for x equals two. Got some extra land drops to play. And then we can deal damage to the Blood Sky Berserkers since we've drawn three cards total, which is six damage. And then I guess we can keep another Archon. Right on top. And attack for two. So we should have stabilized now. Rankles, okay. So I don't think they have any great attacks. And we'll play another Archon. Make a shard token. Play Omen. And I don't mind additional lands so we can play an even bigger Nico. And we can keep Omen at instant speed. And we'll probably pass a turn. So this would be a good time to find a Nyx Bloom Ancient as well, Freebooter. I guess we'll resolve Omen. They can have one Nico. Takes the Haven instead. Opponents hanging in there, but don't really see them coming back at this point. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. So yeah, we took a bit of damage early on, but once we managed to stabilize with Satessan Champion and Archon of Sun's Grace, Nico is a great way to take over. So yeah, overall, this uh, Bant enchantment deck is pretty fun once it gets going. Nyx Bloom Ancient, probably not necessary for the deck to function, but it was mostly here to make a nice intro, which I think it achieved. So you can potentially replace that with additional two drops like Thaumaturge or Nessing Wonder, or maybe even additional copies of Banishing Light. Could also play Cultivate as a fine ramp spell, although can't play too many copies without adding more basic lands. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.